In this webcast, we want to look at how the reactivity of the carbonyl group is influenced by its structure. And we'll begin with this simple resonance description. That resonance description accurately predicts the polarity of the carbonyl group with a partial positive charge on the electrophilic carbonyl group and a partial negative charge on oxygen. We draw the resonance contributor this way because that pi bond is drawn toward the more electronegative oxygen atom. And we re what we reveal in this second best resonance contributor is an electron deficient carbonyl carbon. This picture is consistent with a molecular orbital description, and if we're thinking about the electrophilic character of this, we want to examine the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And if you do a molecular orbital calculation of formaldehyde, and you look at the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, you end up with this pi star molecular orbital shown here. Most importantly, what you can see is, looking at the carbonyl carbon, the largest contribution of that lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is centered on carbon. And so that incoming nucleophile with its filled pair of electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital is going to be drawn in by this lowest unoccupied molecular orbital largely concentrated on the carbon atom. Let's take a look at a series of carbonyl electrophiles to understand some structure reactivity correlations. In this series A through C, we see decreasing size of the group at the alpha positions. And simply because of the accessibility to the carbonyl electrophile, molecule C is a better electrophile than molecule A. So this is a steric factor, and it explains why aldehydes are more reactive than ketones, because in an aldehyde, one of these groups is going to be the small hydrogen atom. The second series reveals that besides size, other factors matter. For example, if we look at molecule F, it's got a pair of electrons on the nitrogen that can be donated by an n to pi star fashion. And we're going to see that that greatly decreases the electrophilicity. In contrast, molecule D has a trifluoromethyl group that can withdraw electrons into the electronegative fluorine by an inductive effect. And that's going to make the carbonyl even more electrophilic. And so electrophilicity increases from F to D. What's changing in this series of molecules isn't so much the size, although there's a small increase in size in F, but mainly what's going on is that there's an electronic factor. Specifically, we're changing the LUMO level. In molecule F, we're raising the LUMO and making it inaccessible to the incoming nucleophile, while we're lowering the LUMO in molecule D. Let's draw a molecular orbital diagram for this amide so we can see how the n to pi star interaction raises the pi star LUMO. The frontier orbitals involved are the non-bonding pair of electrons, that's a filled level, and then we have a pi star level, that's the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. This is the picture before resonance. If we could somehow keep resonance from taking place, we'd have a lowest unoccupied molecular orbital that's represented by that green line. Now, what happens when we turn on resonance? We donate that pair of electrons on the nitrogen into pi star. And as soon as we turn on resonance, we have a filled, empty, frontier orbital interaction that's going to cause the lowering of our filled level, and there'll be a raising of our empty level. Always, when we have filled empty interactions, our orbital diagram changes in this way. And so you can see, as a consequence of resonance, we've increased the LUMO level and made that pi star higher in energy, make, making it a poorer electrophile. Now let's see what happens when we protonate the carbonyl. When we add a proton to the carbonyl oxygen, that oxygen is going to become positively charged and the positive charge is going to lower the atomic orbitals of that oxygen. That lowering will be reflected in pi star, making it lower in energy, and so as a consequence, we can make a poor, more powerful electrophile any time we protonate the carbonyl oxygen. You can see in the molecular orbital diagram how this coefficient is decreasing in size once that proton is added to the carbonyl oxygen of formaldehyde. Adding a proton lowers the LUMO, makes that a much more powerful electrophile. So which carbonyl derivatives are most easily protonated? Let's compare this molecule of acetone and the ester, ask the question which carbonyl 
is the stronger base? To answer that question, let's protonate both of these. When we protonate the molecule of acetone, there really are no good resonance contributors that we can draw. But in the case of this ester, we've got lone pairs, and so we can delocalize that positive charge through n to pi star pi type interactions. And so molecule B is more stable because of that delocalized charge. So if we want to answer this question about basicity, we can draw an energy diagram. We'll plot free energy versus reaction progress, or maybe you should put species in equilibrium. We'll put the neutral species at the same energy because it's charge which is the greatest contributor to the energy, and these neutral species are very similar. But it's the difference in stability between the protonated form, A being less stable, B being more stable, that really defines the basicity of these two groups. So we can see that there's a driving force, a favorable driving force, for protonating that ester, and we would conclude then that the stronger base is that ester functionality. And this is revealed in the pKa's of these conjugate acids. So in this webcast, what we learned is that the reactivity of the carbonyl group is very much influenced by its structure, both in terms of electronic factors that influence the position of the LUMO, as well as steric factors that influence the accessibility to the carbonyl carbon.